let's uh, let's talk some Cardinals here. G- give me you guys your your thoughts on the weekend, and we can just go big picture here as we have a couple of days till the National League Wild Card game, which is Wednesday. We now know it's in LA. Will be broadcast on TBS a little after seven o'clock. You know it's going to be Adam Wainwright opposing Max Scherzer over the weekend. The Cardinals. They win a game. Uh, they they take one of three from the Cubs, but it really didn't matter. Uh, so you get you get right, you get healthy. I liked seeing and Jim. I'm interested in in your opinion on this because Jack Flaherty, he did look pretty dang good. <laughs> I knew this and, was and, coming. And I say this because the last week, the last series of the season. What else are you really trying to find out that you don't know? Right. In terms of of your lineup, I think you're you're pretty good. Now you wanted to see if Yachty was right because clearly. He had the the shoulder stiffness earlier in the week. You want to see what's going on with Edmundo Sosa, who was also a little banged up. On the pitching side, if you're trying to make that roster and and have some difficult decisions, I think Jack Flaherty was the most interesting person to watch in the last series of the season because you know if he's right, he can be really, really good. But his first couple outings, you didn't really know. So my question to you, we'll start with Jim, is, is do you now think, okay, not only should this man be on the roster because we know he's going to be. Do you want Jack Flaherty, Jack Flaherty, to be the first person out of the bullpen if, let's say, Adam Wainwright goes five innings against the Dodgers? They first, I don't mind him on the on the roster. One game playoff wild card, whatever we're calling this, your roster looks different. You take, you're not going to take starters. Or you're going to start game possible game one or game two of a series should you win. Uh, yeah, I think Flaherty should be on the roster. I don't know if I'm ready to put him in a high leverage situation, though. It's almost to the point where I keep Flaherty on the back end of a game. Let's say it goes into the 10th or 11th inning. Go, okay, here, I need an inning here or there. I don't know if I'm ready to put him ahead of the six guys that are already doing great work. I'm talking about McFarlane, Garcia, Cabrera, Reyes, I'll include there, and, and Gallegos. That's that's five and uh, missing one. Uh Whitley. So that's six. I I don't know if I bring in Flaherty before those six. Cameron, Brooke. Go ahead, Brooke. I say that you, well, first of all, you hope that Adam Wainwright can go more than five innings, which that's a big part of it. But I say that you do put him out there. I think he looked great on Sunday. We got to see what we wanted to see. The trainers say that he's healthy. He got the job done. He did what you needed him to do on Sunday. And... Don't forget, he's an L.A. boy, so there's mm-hmm. even more on the line with that. I mean, just think about it. If you would have said at the beginning of the season, of course, we could have never predicted everything that happened, but you would be like, yeah, of course I want Jack Flaherty out there in a winner-take-all game, right? Whether he's coming out of the bullpen or starting, of course I want Jack Flaherty out there. Of course, things have changed since then with the injury, but if he's healthy, if he's right, he did what he needed to do on Sunday to show them, yes, I deserve to come out there. If Wainwright can't get past, you know, can't go into the seventh or anything like that, then, yeah, why not put him out there? Why not is right. Guy throws heat. We see what he can do. He's ready to rock and roll. He's gone through a lot of ups and downs, but I think that he's, if they clear him, man, like, you got to give him something. You got to give him the ball at some point if it's necessary. You know what I mean? Like, he's one of your... You know, he's, he's got so much firepower. We see what he could do. I don't know. I'd throw him out there. He's going to be rocking and rolling. Stays in L.A. A bunch of people will be watching. I don't know. And Give him the ball. And, Jim, what you said about some of these other relievers, where I agree with you, right now, now you have tremendous confidence in Gio Gallegos, in Genesis Cabrera, in, in T.J. McFarlane, especially in a lefty matchup. You need a double play. He's really good at that. Luis Garcia. And I'll say, though, you mentioned Alex Reyes. At this point in the season – even from a relief standpoint, which is that's that's where Jack Flaherty is going to help this team right now, I would rather see Jack Flaherty than Alex Reyes at this point in the season. I just think when you're talking about one game, do or die. Now, if if you advance, they're going to use Alex Reyes 100%, as they should. I just wonder, though, in a one-game do or die with a, a pitcher that walks a lot of guys, that one walk can be the difference in the game. And, and Brooke, what you said is true in terms of do you want, of course you want more than five innings from Adam Wainwright, but we know the postseason's a different animal, especially in a win-or-go-home situation. You have no margin for error. And against the Dodgers lineup, even if Max Muncy's not in there, Adam Wainwright, I mean, he's gone basically seven innings for the last couple months, every single outing. I just feel like seven innings in the regular season 
usually turns into more like five or five and a third in a winner go home one game playoff where your entire pitching staff, your entire bullpen is rested and you're facing a really good team. The Dodgers can absolutely grind out at bats where Adam Wainwright might be at a hundred pitches in, in the fifth inning or early on in the sixth inning. Well, and also it does, I will say Wainwright's last two starts slightly concerned me because, okay, he went, let's see, against Milwaukee, four innings, and then that was on the 23rd, and then the 28th again, six innings, seven hits, two earned runs off of that. And so he wasn't exactly great in those last two starts, but the offense saved him. And that was somewhat concerning to me. Now, do I think that we're going to see Adam Wainwright absolutely just turn it on in this game, this winner-take-all game? Of course. But still, it was a little bit concerning for me to see that because it wasn't really the Adam Wainwright that I feel like we had been seeing up until this point. What do you guys think? Just give me your give me your storylines. And we'll have a couple days. We'll actually have three days here to preview the wild card game. And we know that it's Scherzer versus Wainwright. We'll we'll know the rosters exactly here tomorrow or pretty soon, whenever that, that deadline is. But just as we reflect now on 162 in the regular season, let's be real. Nobody saw September coming the way it did for the Cardinals and the 17 game winning streak. So we have a couple days now to reflect on that before the wild card game. So just What are some big-picture thoughts from what you guys saw the last six months? Harrison Bader, I mean, that guy, he's he's on it. Whether you can critique him or not with his long hair, maybe he runs runs into the wall barely, and then he flies down like, oh, and makes the – look, that's all show, but he's bringing it, man. Like, he really is. Is he the MVP of the year? I I don't know. There's a couple guys. You can throw Goldie in the mix on that too. Maybe uh, a Tommy Edmond would be like a a, – um, what's that the award you win that no one talks about? What's that called? Scrappy Hustler. Scrappy Hustler Award. I, I used to win in juniors and stuff. Like the guy that doesn't deserve the big awards, but you give him an award just to make him happy because he works hard. That kind of guy. But I, I just that think. That sounds like the coach's son I'm award. I'm just saying. <laughs> the the coach's coach's guy, whoever, Tyler. That's like the, the son of the biggest donor. <laughs> everybody's, ste- everybody's stepping up to the plate that needs to step up. They're all on their A game. Tyler O'Neill is just a beast. Goldie's doing his thing. Guys got healthy at the right time. Other teams, guys got injured at the wrong time. And I just think that they're just in a good spot right now, and people and the, the guys are just confident. And in baseball, gosh, confidence is basically everything. Yeah, I think Tyler O'Neill has been one of the most impressive to me because it seems like he's just been consistently powerful for the Cardinals, especially during this entire stretch. And it just seems like all of them are really clicking perfectly at the same time. And you hear that all the time, but it's like, how else do you explain that 17 stre- like seventeen win streak. How do you explain that other than everybody's getting hot at the right time, everybody's feeding off each other, all those coach sayings, you know, all that stuff, the chemistry is finally there. I don't know how else you explain it other than everything perfectly lined up. And I was actually somewhat impressed, even though they didn't win this weekend, I was still impressed that, you know, you still saw a lot of the same guys who were hot in September, still hot going into October as we go into this postseason, because that's always the biggest question is, okay, yeah, that was a cool stretch, but will this just fade out? Will the offense go back to what it was before? And I don't see that happening as of right now. Text line 855-282-8255. Some of these texts, I'm telling you. (laughs) see They're on you. See, unlike Cam, though, and I love you, Cam, but I screen them first. So, Dr. Bender, I'm not reading your text, okay? (laughs) Joe Boo's Rum, though, he says, Hollywood Harry, Hollywood Harrison Bader, is going to shine in the L.A. spotlight. Yeah, he is. Uh, <laughs> He's Kisilic born for that. says, uh, everyone is talking about Mike Shannon leaving, but I want to thank Erica Weston for being super good on Valley Sports Midwest. By the way, she's going to join us tomorrow to talk about the Cardinals at around 1.30 and reflect on her four years in St. Cool. Louis and agreed. Erica Weston has done a great nice. job. She said she's going to L.A., didn't say what her job was yet. You know, sometimes with contracts and announcements, but uh, we'll talk with Erica tomorrow. People are making fun of me for Peppa Pig. Uh, here's a good one, though. Here's a legit text, which I think is a oh, fair Oh, lovely. Question. What? <laughs> oh, it's a legit text. That's lovely. You know, like Peppa Pig talk? <laughs> I'm just saying it's about time they I'm did telling something. you, I was more rattled by that than anything that's happened I on radio. You I are rattled. sweating. I'm like, did I really not All the things I've said to you, and that makes you rattled? I just feel terrible that I haven't been really having quality bonding time with my daughter. Well, I'm clearly about not that. paying attention. Okay. Brendan from St. Peter says, here I'm worried Schilt gave a lot of the guys too much rest and could have possibly killed the momentum they had. Do you think there's anything 
to that. A lot of those guys did get rested, and I get that. Baseball, you want them rested. You don't want them too rusty. You want most of these guys to see a decent amount of you know live pitching. They have a couple days off before the, the wild card game. You know, the streak had already ended where after they clinch, the next day you have the lineup or what, four regulars at least. And we know at the time Sosa was still banged up. So basically half your lineup was different. Yeah. I don't think it matters that the streak broke. Um, and I don't think if the Cardinals lose the wild card game, it's because they had too much rest. But I do think there's something to a hot team staying hot. So we'll we'll see. Look. It's a balance everything, man. It is. And Max Scherzer can, can stop any hot team. Right. Yeah. If he's right, it doesn't really matter. Sometimes that's that's the other. I, I don't mind it. Like, look, you, you got to give guys rest, and every even if they don't want rest, they're not going to say that they want rest. So it's like, as a coach, you're going to have to be like, okay, you have to evaluate everybody differently too, because the young guys are going to be like, no, I'm good. Like, no, no, sit down and chill. And look, you can mimic a lot of things in baseball too. Like, you want to go hit batting practice, you want to go do your do some infield infield grounding, whatever you want to do. You could still find your groove a little bit, but. Ah, you got to give guys rest because if you don't and you go out there and you don't perform, then that's the, that's the topic that's going to come at you. Well, and also, too, it's like they had some stretches where it was like they were just playing series back to back to back. Yeah. There's not even a day off in between, which they usually have. So it makes sense that you give them just a little bit of rest Get before you're going straight. into like a winner-take-all game. I'd rather them be fully healthy, feeling good going yeah. into that. Splashback on the text line says, big picture thought is if they play solid baseball, they're talented enough to roll over anyone. Throw strikes, swing at balls in their wheelhouse, steady defense. Didn't see a lot of that in the middle of the season from the Cardinals. That's true, and I know this is not hot takey, but it's just true that it would, it would. I don't know if, if, the, if the word equal is correct, but if the Cardinals either lose the wild card game or were to go on a run and get to the World Series, neither of those options would surprise me, right? And I know that's that's not a great take. That's that's kind of riding the fence, but it's one game. It's one game against Max Scherzer. You could very easily lose that game. But if you win that game and you get to a series, I do think the Cardinals are, at this point in the season, who's hotter than the Cardinals in the last month? I know they don't have 106 wins like the Dodgers, but guess what? That doesn't matter. Doesn't All matter. the wins that yep. they racked up in April and May, okay, the Cardinals in the last month, have been the hottest team in all of baseball. So it wouldn't surprise me if they find a way to win the wild card game to go on a nice run. But it's not like it's going to be easy. The Dodgers are out. What's their payroll? It's the highest in baseball. You're facing Max Scherzer. Even without Max Muncy, I can still just run down a ton of fantastic players they have. Mookie Betts. I mean, Chris Taylor. They're loaded, dude. Just go go around. Yeah. Corey Seager. Trey loaded. Turner. They're a, they're a freaking all-star team. It's yeah, it's intimidating, and also the last time that we faced Mad Max, what was it, thirteen strikeouts? I mean, he is like, I feel like we've talked about it so many times with Max Scherzer. I mean, he's unbelievable, and that is a very scary threat going into it. And Mike Schultz said this past weekend, like, oh well, we've, you know, we've fared pretty well in matchups to get against him, and also brought up spring training. And I'm like, spring training. Does that even count? That's like that's like preseason hockey, like we were talking about. Ugh. Like, does it matter? <laughs> you know? But it's like Max Scherzer is a scary dude, and that's going to be intimidating to go up against. But it is very ironic. I think we talked about this last week, that a team can have over 100 wins and still be in a winner-take-all scenario. I know. That's just wild. It's horrible. Yeah. With a payroll like that, they could lose that damn game, and it's over. Not even 100 wins. It's 106 six. They could lose, and it's over. It is That's so goofy. Wild. That is goofy, in my opinion. I'm sorry. That sucks, actually. If you're if you're that team and you lose, I don't know. With that payroll, should, kick they, ass all year. If the Cardinals win, <laughs> they should play like the one shining moment like they do for college basketball, you know? <laughs> well, this should be <laughs> a three. That's what it feels yeah, like, like, where it's just like, that's it's just wild. I just think, too, you, you look at this game. Now, the Dodgers can put a crooked number on you. Sure, they could do that. But also... The Cardinals do play really, and I say this now, it wasn't always the case, but they play really sound baseball. They usually don't give runs away. They're, by the different metrics, they're the best defensive team in baseball, if not right up there when you look at kind of different uh, ways to evaluate that. They're really good at run prevention. Okay, do they have the greatest offense? No. But can you stick in a game till the 7th, 8th, ninth if it's tied, if you're up one, if you're down one? 
you hand it over to some bullpen options now that you really, really like. And yeah, so if you're the Cardinals, it wouldn't surprise me if if you have a chance to win this game in the eighth or ninth inning. Okay, I have a question for you. I know this is your show, Charlie, but I'm going to throw is, this no, at you. No, this is our show. 51% his family. show. I got 49% on it. Well, We're actually, family. hold on. <laughs> Cam always goes over. Yeah, I do. So really, it's, <laughs> it's more of his show. Okay, the question. If you think that there's going to be something that wins this for the Cardinals in this wild card game, is it going to be the starting pitching? Is it going to be the bullpen? Or is it going to be the offense? Or even the defense? Okay, to me, if you just if you ask me how do the Cardinals win this game, I think Adam Wainwright pitches very solid for five or six innings. So he doesn't allow more than three runs, let's say. Okay? And I think you win a game 4-3 or 3-2, and you need a two- or three-run homer. And later on in the game. Well, from New yeah. Park. No, I just think, yeah, large somebody, New Park. Yeah. I just think the Cardinals probably aren't going to give runs away. Pitchers are really good. But to me, the Cardinals win. I don't see them winning... 1-0. To me, it's the Cardinals winning with like a, a Paul Goldschmidt or a Nolan Arenado or a Tyler O'Neill two or three run homer to win a game, let's say 4-3 or 3-2-ish. Now, say that they make it past this wild card game. Do you still think the starting pitching is going to be the reason why they continue on a run into the postseason? I don't think so. No, I don't. I think the starting pitching is is good enough. You You love Adam Wainwright. Now, can Jack Flaherty turn into a multi-inning super reliever in the playoffs? Sure. You only need about three, three-and-a-half starters. I think with the off days, I think you feel pretty good about... Now, Wainwright obviously wouldn't be able to pitch for a while if he pitches the the all, the uh, the wild card game, but aren't you feeling pretty good about uh, John Lester, who's a, a postseason hero? Yep. I know he's older, but still, you feel confident. Miles Michaelis right now, I think you're feeling pretty good about Miles Michaelis. And then your other option... You got Dakota Hudson. Okay, you have Jay Happ as a possibility. But I think I don't think the Cardinals are going to win the World Series based on starting pitching. But I don't think they're going to lose it based on it. Like the Milwaukee Brewers, to me, if the Brewers win the World Series, they're going to win it based on starting pitching. The Cardinals, for them to win the World Series, it's going to be just solid overall. Everything. All three facets, fundamental baseball for a month. Eric and Central Weston chimes in goes, I could really see Pujols getting the game winner. That, Man. The irony and all of that, oh just Max boy. Scherzer, yeah. Oh yeah. Albert Pujols. I could see that happening. But I could see the Cardinals kicking their ass, too, and just being like, ah, there you go, see you later. Isn't that weird, though? I mean, I could just see it. If you're a Dodgers fan, are you just losing your mind? Because shouldn't it be, if the Cardinals win first, the Dodgers should be able to play them again and do a game, I don't know, something. <laughs> like, it's got to be, you won 106 games, it's crazy. And what's so crazy about it is, like, what happened back in the day it really doesn't matter in the sense of what happened in 2013 and in 2014 between the Cardinals and Dodgers. It really has no effect on what's going to happen on Wednesday, but it affects your mind. It affects the way you think about this, which is why it would not surprise me one bit if the weird-ass Cardinals, just some yeah. something weird happens. Like the Cardinals devil magic narrative, which has been going on for about 10 years, it's because there's always weirdness or a dude you've never heard of, or let's say the national baseball media and fan base. For example, we watch every game of the Cardinals. We know who Tommy Edmond is. We know he has 30 stolen bases, 40 doubles. We know he's legit. He's the leadoff man. Do you think the average baseball fan that hasn't been watching the Cardinals knows who Tommy Edmond is no. so that when they watch the wild card game, Tommy Edmond's going to have a two-run triple and just <laughs> stick a dagger in the Dodgers' Steal a big base. Yeah. Steal mm -hmm. a big base. Mm -hmm. yep. And they're going to be like, Oh, Cardinals devil magic. These dudes like Tommy Edmund, I've never heard of this guy. That's that's usually what happens with the Cardinals, or that's what happened with some of these runs, right? It was guys like Matt Carpenter before you kind of knew who he was. Matt Adams. Michael Walker comes up in 2013 as a rookie and basically freaking dominates for the entire October. So, again, when you get to a game like Wednesday, I know it doesn't matter, but I go in with a confidence because I've seen the Cardinals – do this so much. And I understand it it doesn't really matter. But I, but we were also Brooke go back 2 years. That game 5 against <coughs> the Braves, I know they got swept by the Nationals. If you got to your seat late for game 5 against the Braves, <laughs> the game was over in 12 minutes. Yep, I remember that. Yep. They scored freaking 10 runs in one inning. We were sitting there 
We had just gotten our food. We're sitting down like, hey, let's have a good time. We'll tweet. Oh, we'll have some funny tweets. And I wonder who's going to win. The game was over in six minutes. Yep. That and you're happen. sitting there like, what the hell is going on? We criticize this team all the time. They're not even that good. And they always shove it in our face. They do. I call that the John Mosellock magic, not devil magic anymore. It's both. <laughs> It, it's, it is weird, but good teams, when you are successful and you beat other good teams in big situations, like guys show up, like young guys or a kid that no one's ever heard of does something Pete to Cosmo. turn the corner, yeah. like yeah. to change Pete the time. Cosmo. Yeah, and, and so that's what happens. So fortunately, we've seen it happen with the Blues. I mean, you know, guys, Patty steps up and has a big one, you know, like he was whatever the case. That could be a bad comparison. But the point is, like, if you're good. It's not just your superstars that get by. You got to have that kid that no one talks about step up and steal that big base or score that big goal, and that's why you're successful. So, I'm man, they're going to win ten nothing. Newt Bar. That's yeah. the thing. Newt Bar is the guy. You're right. Yeah, Cardinals Devil Magic is somebody like Lars Newt Bar who has just a weird name Owned and nobody's heard of. Name. And he's so going to have a bloop single. He's going to have a two run bloop broke. He's going to he's going to have a two run broken bat single off Max Scherzer. Max Scherzer is actually going to throw an oh. excellent pitch. Yep. <laughs> It's it's going to be the perfect execution of a slider low and away or something like that, and Lars Newbar is going to get a two-run single. Piece of it. That's usually what happens with the Cardinals. Is then they're that going to overthrow happen? the ball, and then they're going to, yeah. Snowball fight. Here's yep. the deal. It's going to be fun to watch. I can't wait to watch the wild card game, even though I do think it's kind of not fair for a 106-win team ridiculous. to play a 90-win team, and it's one game. But look, it makes for fantastic theater, fantastic television, and I know all of St. Louis will be watching Text line 855-282-8255. Eric in the Central West End says, I could totally see Pujols getting a game-winning hit. Uh, Tim Van Gelded saying, would you be tempted to start Dakota Hudson? He would be on regular rest and has been great since returning. I definitely would feel good about him starting in a postseason game in the DS, but not in the wildcard game, obviously. Uh, let's see. The scary thing about the Dodgers is they won 106 games with about 19% of their payroll suspended most of the season. Of course, Trevor Bauer was out for, uh, what, over half of the year. The hottest sportscaster this town has ever seen once said, if we can just get hot, we can win this I've never baby. said that. We can I've win never this said that. that That's be, a lie. That would be That's Doug Vaughn. Oh, oh, Dougie. <laughs> and he's, uh, he's right on that. Our guy Kyle, here's another good question for you guys. So Kyle says, it's pretty great that the Cardinals are going to have two players that receive legitimate MVP votes, even if they don't win. Good for Goldschmidt and Prince Sex. He calls them Prince Sex. That's Tyler O'Neill. That's Kyle's nickname <laughs> for great uh, guy. Tyler O'Neill. So let's ask Where that did question. Where that though. nickname come from? I don't know. <laughs> He's kind of sexy. I didn't, uh, I didn't edit that one. <laughs> I mean, but that's Kyle. Hey, that's Kyle's nickname. And uh, we all like Tyler O'Neill, so it's all good. Okay. MVP. For the Cardinals this year, mm. you can go Wayno if you want to go pitching. But I usually like to kind of have a Cy Young for the pitcher. I like to pick a position player for the uh, for the MVP. Even though you could make the case that Adam Wainwright was such a stopper this year, like ten different times, losing streak, boom, he answered the bell. So, what do you guys think though in terms of uh, your MVP for the Cardinals twenty twenty one? Paul Goldschmidt. That's what I'd say. Yep. Jimmy, kind of. I'm kind of there with the Goldschmidt thing, but. Because he's been so consistent. But I'll say this, um, in trying to just be different and look at it differently, if it wasn't for Tyler O'Neill just getting smoking hot and taking over to the number three position in that lineup, this may not happen. And he's been as important to anything in this thing taking off. But, I mean, can you can you say, oh, Paul Goldschmidt, you're not worthy? I mean, no. I mean, he's just been everything to this team. And how about Nolan Arenado then, on yeah. the flip side? A hundred RBIs, thirty-four homers, which ties the franchise record at third. I mean, I don't know. I you can flip a coin, and you know you wouldn't be wrong. Here's the good question, though, and I'll re-ask it. I love to look up stats, and especially after the season's over. So go by WAR. So total WAR wins above replacement. Tyler O'Neill leads position players for the Cardinals, six point three. Paul Goldschmidt is at six point two. Now you should also give Tyler O'Neill credit because. He had a higher war despite playing 20 fewer games. Remember, Tyler O'Neill was out early in the season. So Tyler O'Neill played 138 games. Paul Goldschmidt played 158. So in a way, you could say, okay, Paul Goldschmidt answered the bell more. He was there throughout the season, the whole season, even though offensively he wasn't great the first couple months. But Tyler O'Neill was able to have actually superior numbers playing 20 fewer games. 
So what do we think? Well, and also, too, I was just trying to think of, you know, defensively, they both have had some, like, highlight real oh, worthy exactly. defensive plays too so it's i don't know that's a that's a tough one i mean but then then again it's also a great position to be in that there's multiple guys obviously that's how we got to this point that you could point to that you look at as possible mvp candidates and that's where go by war tyler o'neill 6.3 goldie 6.2 no one arenado 4.2 harrison bader 3.9 edmund 3.7 dylan carlson 3.2 Tyler O'Neill with a 912 OPS. Tyler O'Neill with a 560 slugging percentage. Uh, let's Dylan see. Carlson too. Like we haven't brought yeah. his name up. Like yeah. damn. Like and Dylan Carlson him quietly. Yeah, is coming on lately. Dylan Carlson 3.2 in terms of WAR. So yeah, he's right up there. I just think if you're looking at the guys who are going to help you win a baseball game or a series in the playoffs or a one game wild card, it is pretty cool that when you look at just take the Cardinals first. Really, six guys. I was going to cut it off after Nar- uh, Nolan Arenado, but go O'Neill, Goldschmidt, Arenado, Bader, Edmund, Carlson. All of those guys in a wild card game could beat you with the bat, with a great play defensively, with a smart base running play, right? I mean, look at that. Your 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 MVPs offensively: Tyler O'Neill, Paul Goldschmidt, Nolan Arenado. They're all Gold Glove caliber players. Harrison Bader's going to win a gold glove. Tommy Edmond is really, really good defensively. That's where you can't count this team out. They have too many really, really good to great baseball players, right? They're smart. They play defense. They run the bases. They're fundamentally sound. You got good leaders. Yachty, Wayno, they've been there. I don't know. They look pretty good right now. I I don't know. They could go out there and spank them and and put a shellacking on them and and kind of Make a tear. I, I don't know. They had the talent to do it, Brooke. This could be pretty exciting coming up here. But by the way, just because Tyler O'Neill's smoking hot doesn't mean he's going to win MVP, okay? you got to play good, too, Jimmy. Come on. Looks aren't everything. Come on, Jimmy. Louise. Looks are not everything. Come on. You're right. <laughs> got to play good ball, Jimmy. <laughs> don't you just... you got to love Tyler O'Neill, by the way, just because... Okay, he's a great player, but also his look. So, oh, it's and, great. And he's Brooke, so himself. We're always, he's we're not right. afraid of anything. Right. And we're always down there lately on the field for, for batting practice and all that. And he, he clearly looks like a bro. And yeah. he, he has fun with that. He's like, bro, Neil? Yeah, okay. I'm, he's a I'm, Canadian. I'm kind of a meathead. Yeah. But he's really smart. He's really well-spoken. He looks like a bodybuilder. During BP, he's got a freaking, like, an Under Armour shirt that's about to break. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's <laughs> got the anyone? sleeve tab. <laughs> he looks like nails, but not creepy. Right. But his, his shirt is about to break because of his muscles. But then he sprints around the bases when he's hitting home runs, plays fantastic Your defense. He's just a really interesting player to watch. Oh, Good yeah. athlete. And also, fantastic off the field, athlete. fashion-wise, I know that we've seen him, especially in spring training. I mean, the hat, the Louis V hat, the Gucci slides and all that stuff. But still, it's like a little understated. It's not too flashy. I don't know how to describe it. Here's what he's I'm trying to say. He's just like so I don't know, just chill, but like he's bro-y. perfect. Well, he is. <laughs> he's okay. perfect. As usual, as usual, I don't describe things well. You know how you judge a book by its cover? Yes. We all do it. If I saw Tyler O'Neill, I'd be like, this dude's probably a D bag. Yeah. He's not. He's no. the coolest dude ever. I'm mm-hmm. just saying, like, what about Harrison Bader? Harrison Bader's a good dude. Yeah, if you, no, 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 no. Answer the question. You just say you you ask your own question to answer it. What would you think of Harrison Bader? <laughs> oh no, it's I've said this wise. a million times. Harrison Bader is loud. He's flashy. He's a dude that if he's on your team, you love him. Everybody else, you hate that dude. I've said this. Yeah. All my buddies are are up in Chicago, and when they watch a Cards Cubs game, they all text me like, "I hate Bader." Yeah. Right, because he's oh, making, yeah. he's he making embraces, he embraces yeah. that yeah. villain, villain you want that. kind of thing. Yeah. Well, and also, who was that cartoon um, from Cartoon Network? And it was like the guy with that was muscly, blonde hair, wore sunglasses. Johnny Bravo? Yeah. Johnny Bravo, yeah. yeah. So I remember, <laughs> Great I remember guy. my first year covering the Cardinals, and Tyler O'Neill was just like coming up, kind of getting hot, all that kind of stuff. I remember they put a photo, the players put a photo of um, of that cartoon in his locker. And it was the funniest thing because it looks just like him, too. He it was his spiked hair, up hair, all that stuff. And I'm, I'm telling you, so they make that trade several years ago, right? They trade Marco Gonzalez. So that trade happens, and you hear the name Tyler O'Neill. So you look up the stats and all that, and okay, this guy's got power in the minors. We'll see what happens. But nobody, 
had really seen him play, or at least I had never seen him play. Yeah. Okay, and you see a picture, you look at the picture on Baseball Reference, whatever it is. That next year, and I don't know if you were here yet, Brooke, but it was that winter warm-up. So winter warm-up, everybody, if you know, you know, the, the players are out there signing the autographs in the big room, in the big ballroom, and so they're signing the autographs. But then all the players come in to do a little media scrum. They just do five or ten minutes to talk to the media because it's kind of the unofficial start of the season. Well, nobody really knew who Tyler O'Neill was because we'd never seen him before. We had never interviewed him. He had just been traded. This dude walks in to the the podium <laughs> looking like Mr. Olympia. We're like, who is this dude? <laughs> we didn't know who he was. And we're like, uh, who is this? So we have know he's not going to be anybody I mean, for like three years. Do I ask him about, uh, is he the new strength coach? Is right? He, the new he does. Kind of like it was just funny because we're all like, whoa. Yeah, no, he is. He's a, uh, but then also, like I said, super nice. And ESPN, as we know, they love to talk about how his dad was Mr. Canada about like 500 times. I don't think I've ever watched an ESPN broadcast where they haven't mentioned that whenever the Cardinals are on. Yes, there. you're right. <laughs> That's another part of this. And I get it. We, and, and look, we love Valley Sports Midwest. They do a great job. I truly believe we have some of the best local broadcasters, I mean, in, in the country. I always laugh at the national broadcasts because, you know, you can't pay attention to every team. No, you, you can't. can't. Yeah. And no. I get it. If you're the Pierre McGuire. If you're the guy coming in, you just can't <laughs> know everything about every team. So you go to the game notes and you go to the five storylines that we've heard yeah. all year long. That's where I always, and, and it's going to happen again. At the wild card game, you're going to hear the same storylines as if it's breaking news on Wednesday. Hey, you know, whatever, whatever it is back in the day, if it was rally squirrel or the salsa, like, Hey, did you guys hear about this salsa after we had, yes, we did. Thank you. Discussing it, you know, or Or whatever. As A-Rod would say that salsa. There you go. (laughs) 